You know, there's two factors here, where you're trying to get to and what kind of equipment you're trying to bring up. It's a big task to try to bring three camera guys, five riders, and all this stuff into the backcountry that's really deep in a remote location. It's pretty intense. So yeah, these guys are riding these 500 pound sleds and, and hucking them in the backcountry. Well, the backcountry is, you know, hundreds of miles in some cases away from hospitals. There was a level of uncomfortability. We did have to do some creative stuff to take several trips to Valdez that were not planned and not in the budget. Not everyone that was in our film was in Alaska. We had Joe Parsons and Heath Frisbee coming from the northwestern part of the U.S. Brett Turcott and two of his buddies coming from Kamloops, B.C. A lot of time traveling, man. Yeah, I didn't realize he had like three flights to get here. Logistically, it was a bit of a challenge. Every time we'd go up somewhere, Joe and Heath and Corey, they would be building the jumps and we would be you know, shuttling gear. So there's a lot more involved behind the scenes that people don't know. The riders, you know, offer some perspective. You know, we would get up to an area on the mountain and they would say, okay, this is the jump we want to hit. The line looks good. You're on the right track. And I would have to figure out, you know, how, what's going to go down here. And they would give me a play-by-play, -play, and then I would offer my input. If I see what you want to do with a heli, if one comes, and if not, see where your backups are without a heli. Whenever you're dealing with that many people, and filming is, is just stressful in itself because, you, you know, you're trying to get the specific shot, and if things aren't working out, there's a lot of variables. That shot might be sick, dude. Hey, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut. Yeah, but they're doing some weird shit. Look at him. No, hold on. Yeah. Oh, get it. Get it. Quiet. No, he told me to cut. Damn, dude. That was it, dude. We fucking missed the money shot. You know, you get high tension while you're shooting, and then once you wrap for the day and you get kind of a pow at the end at a meeting, we kind of all make amends and come back. It comes with the territory. I mean, that's just the way things are, and, you know, you just deal with it. It's really difficult to get good shots out in the backcountry when you're filming sledding because you either have to be a good sledder or you have to rely on someone else to get you to the location. The certain places that have these ridiculous hill climbs, it's crazy enough that these guys are trying to get up by themselves. Now you're going to try and put a second person on these sleds if they're going to double up on these shuttle runs. You know, most of the time you make it, but sometimes you don't make it. Uh, it's a little bit sketchy. The benefit of having so many shooters is that you get interesting new perspectives from each one of them. You do want to direct, but you want to allow people to do what they do best. So I wanted to give people creative freedom. Ten feet in front of the jump, going from left, this side of the jump to this side, and the camera stays on it, and it's like a moving shot. I just want to straight funnel with them. Track right behind him? Like, yeah. Now we could do a pull off up here and get the cars moving around with the stars. That was really cool that they enabled me to have some kind of freeform creativity. I don't know, they seem to think I'm some kind of handheld helicopter master. Don't want to let them down. Guess we'll see what we get today, huh? It was a collaboration at every level, like on the mountain and off the mountain. There's very few times that you get to go out there with all your buddies and these riders of this caliber and make a movie of this scale. You know, we just saw the opportunity and seized it. The rest is history.